welcome to US City 360. I'm Dilbar Shatterson. We're here today in New York City's Financial District in front of the Federal Hall National Memorial and right across from the New York Stock Exchange. And in 2007, this is the place where the world's economy plummeted into financial crisis. Precisely speaking, the National Bureau of Economic Research found that almost 40% of households have been affected either by unemployment, negative home equity, arrears on their mortgage payments, or foreclosure. And here to help us make sense of the chaos is Siddharth Malhotra, professor and MBA candidate at NYU. So welcome, Siddharth. What do you feel is the cause or, or contributed to the financial crisis? It was generally a collective increase in spending and leverage uh, brought about perhaps by the financial crisis in 2007 and 2008. People were taking too many mortgages, but also the people who should have been watching, people who should have been controlling what's going on, we're not watching. And overall, the interconnectedness of the financial system was increasing along with this leverage. As an economy grows and people prosper, individuals, institutions, and governments generally start to take more risk. But as that cycle reverses, all of a sudden, the financial flows reverse, the trust in the system starts reversing causing problems to start spiraling. Well, actually, I'd like to take us to a video segment where we'll see how the Tsiji Foundation dealt with their own uh, cutbacks when it came to the financial crisis. In 2007, financial crisis swept across the USA. Shares were just getting hammered this morning. We're down by between 3 and 4.5 percent, down 300 points. The Dow Jones index slipped from 14,000 to below 6,600 the most severe recession since World War II, property prices sunk and the asset bubble burst. Corporations laid off many employees and many nonprofits too were left unspared. A huge challenge faced Siji USA's former CEO, William Goode. Because of the economy, many people lost their jobs and so the willingness to donate had fallen. But the need for aid was still growing, so some service projects became extremely important. Master Zhang Yan felt puzzled. She said, how did people's love change because of the economy? People are still full of love. Large donations were fewer, but still, a smaller donation doesn't have to impact their financial situation, I thought. The Power of Five project encouraged the public to donate $5 a month. For the fundraiser, South African volunteers were invited to share their stories. Uh, we get money, uh, we're able to, to feed those orphans. We're taking care of more than 5,000 orphans. Small donations can do a great good. Despite the financial crisis, Tsuji USA collected more donations than anticipated. There was the Sichuan earthquake in 2008 and the Midwest floods in 2009. Through every disaster, Tsuji gave aid for those victims. Has the economic downturn truly passed? Is the economy better than two, three years ago? Yes, a little. But has it fully recovered? I think maybe not. We need some time still. To help the foundation grow under tight conditions, Tsuji USA led the development of its first electronic bamboo bank app, making small donations even easier. In the U.S., to serve the wide population here and to keep up with modern times, we made the bamboo bank virtual. We call it the e-bamboo bank. We want to allow everyone to donate 50 cents through the internet, on their smartphones, and start a movement of kindness and generosity. This is more relevant to society and what this generation needs. How do we allow Zerji to continue to grow sustainably? We need more people with love, willing to leave behind some of their assets for Zerji. Or donate into a perpetuity fund with an endowment. The principle of this won't be used, but the generated cash flow can go to different projects. Whenever the economy is not doing well, maybe donations in this aspect won't be affected. 
All of us in Zerchi, our family, and how we allow this family to develop infinitely is our collective responsibility. In 2010, the Journal of Financial Economics reported 86% of CFOs saying their investment in attractive projects was restricted after the 2007 financial crisis. So then, how can organizations contribute to a healthy economy when they suffer from such cutbacks? So, Siddharth, can you define the velocity of money for us? Sure. The velocity of money is a basic economic concept about how fast money moves through the financial and economic system. Say you own a shop. I come to you and buy a sandwich. So I give you $5. You take that money, pay the baker that you got the bread from. The baker takes that $5, pays the person he got the flour from. So this same $5 has moved through the economic system, say, five, seven times. As an economy slows down, say one person loses their job, suddenly I don't come to you to buy a sandwich that day. Well, you don't have as much money and you pay your baker two days late. He pays his suppliers two days late. And as this starts going through the system, the velocity of money slows and we all feel a tight pinch. Well, while he doesn't exactly sell sandwiches, let's meet a small business owner from Houston, Texas. From Taiwan, Roger Lin relocated to Texas. With the American dream in mind, he opened a restaurant. However, after a conflict with his partner escalating in a lawsuit of more than five years, the income from his restaurant all went into the proceedings. So, at the end, I told my wife, do you want the restaurant or do you want my life? Someone wanted to buy it, someone wanted to take it over, so we sold it. After the sale and a short break, Roger established a power washing business. But with the economic decline in 2007, business ended again. The transition, I know, is kind of difficult because he tried to open the power wash and then it's kind of like fail. You know, you fail, just stand up again. So Suzanne told me, you like tea a lot, right? Why don't we open up a bubble tea store? I thought it was a good idea. But their idea didn't turn out so well after all. I remember on the worst day, the whole day we would earn 70 some dollars. After so many failures in his professional life, but more personally the death of his 18-month-old son, Brian, Roger fell into a depression of his own. I didn't know why I was so stressed, to the point that when I drove home at night, I would think if I tilt the steering wheel just a little, everything will end. Really, I would think that every day. It felt like there was no way out. One day, I drove and drove, and without realizing, I ended up at the Zerchi chapter. After what happened to Brian, I started getting into Buddhism. Roger shared his dilemma with Texas chapter CEO Tarzan Huang. Before Roger left, Huang asked Roger if he would like to take on a position at the chapter office. This would provide Roger a steady income. That is why I feel, if it were not for the strength that came from Zerchi, that really, I would have committed suicide then. But I'm glad, like, later on, like, you know, you work for Zerchi and then become better. <laughs> I am truly thankful for what Susan has done. She's never complained once. I don't know how to support, but, uh, you know, he's my husband, and I just, like, you know, keep going. I just keep telling him, we are OK. <laughs> like, you know, you don't have to be too depressed. <laughs> Slowly, Roger found a sense of calm. Looking back, he feels that his son was in some way a bodhisattva. He connected his father and family to Buddhism and Suji such that Roger abandoned his grim thoughts. Aware of life's ups and downs, Roger no longer feels defeated or afraid. You'll notice the ups and downs of Roger's story parallel the same happenings in the economy at large. As per the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, in 2008, the rate of unemployment increased by about 2.8 million people in the United States alone. So with unemployment so high, and spending money so low, the economy naturally experiences a snail-like growth. So, Siddharth, 
What do you feel is a healthy way to continue the economy? A small correction here and there, I think, is generally considered healthy for the economy. But for people to realize by more frequent, say, corrections, that what goes up comes down, um, that economic cycles are frequent. You know, prior, we had crises, you know, 1995 in Mexico, 97 in Asia, 98 in Russia. We had the dot-com bubble in the U.S. But these were generally con constricted and restricted to, to specific areas. With globalization, the effects of the last financial crisis were felt throughout the world down to, say, you know, the smallest villages in, in Zambia. And actually, there is a small group of ladies who are in California, along with a software engineer, who experienced a call to action after this most recent correction. So now let's visit them in San Jose, California. The bright and shiny beads connect the love of everyone. Every Friday, adults and children come together to knit, to tie, and to make handicrafts. It is not easy. They have to all be evenly spaced and symmetrical. DIY beadwork requires a skillful hand, thoughtful attention to detail, and a lot of patience. This one is good. The knot is tough to tie. This lotus is a little crooked because the space between was too wide. This lotus accessory is a gift for those who donate 1,000 US dollars. Because we hope every generous donor will be joyful to receive this lotus, so if any part of the process was done imperfect, the receiver will be troubled seeing a crooked lotus. I'm learning master spirit in founding the Zuchi Foundation. It started with 30 housewives, so I invited everyone here. Let's be like the 30 housewives and start a million lotus web of love, which is a donation campaign. On the pledge list, a dollar is collected every day, which amounts to $30 a month. Even a small token can be a big contribution. We hope we can raise 10,000 lotuses because we want to rebuild the Northern California office, so we are working together. Knocking and building, a huge building cannot fully operate with insufficient funds. Actually, my biggest fear before this was to go fundraising. It felt really shameful to ask for donations. I don't think it's that hard. The hardest part is because we didn't ask. There is a bigger unknown fear when we talk to strangers. We go out to the shops and we meet many people who have been waiting to give. I think it's because we never ask. The most important thing is that we always had a preconceived notion that it was impossible. Usually the three of us will extend a sincere invitation. Even though we might get rejected, we really feel fulfilled inside. We saw a few other volunteers who are very good at fundraising. Seeing their motivation, I felt I have to follow master steps even more closely to do more for the world. I feel that fundraising is my weakest portion. I want to strengthen that part of me, so I chose to continue to work on it. Actually, I felt very afraid in my heart. In my heart, I feel that I have slowly grown to understand the amount of donation is not the key. It is giving the person a chance to give. Silicon Valley is the largest tech town in the U.S. and is where giants like Google, Apple, Facebook and eBay got started. Intellectual talents abound and they continuously bring the world of technology forward. Siji volunteer Po Ju Tan is one of them. But in 2012, Po Ju planned to introduce another force that would bring the world forward. 
Tsuji. This challenge was a mission impossible that Tsuji USA had not encountered in over 20 years. There are regulations from the larger companies that state that religious groups are not allowed in. Sometimes I thought of giving up, and I struggled for three months. I thought I would start from my own company, Oracle, and I invited some colleagues from our company for a meal. An alternative was required to introduce Tsuji to a big company. Many volunteers with engineering backgrounds invited their colleagues to the lunches. They used facts to present the work Tsuji had done globally, shared the story of the bamboo bank, and promoted Donate Your Love with $1, $3, $5 or more program, which allowed engineers to contribute and donate according to their means. So, we used the lunch gathering format to introduce Tsuji to Apple and NVIDIA. Out of 10 of the engineers who came to the gathering, eight were willing to become partners of Tsuji. Poju's wife is a driving force of this program. Even though she helps manage a tech company, she made time in her busy schedule to work on this project. I support him. He really is using his life to follow the footsteps of Master to work on Tsuji programs. He thinks only for living beings. When he started spreading love to corporations, he did everything. She told me, when I come back from the Tsuji events, I will be temporarily unavailable as I begin to edit videos and process photos. Nothing could stop him. Nothing could stop me. People who have been responsible for event video and photography before would understand the nature of the tasks. It really requires a commitment of your time. Sometimes we do feel bad for the kids and our family, as we couldn't be like typical engineers who bring their family on skiing trips. On the other hand, we regularly spend time together by working on Siji events. The kids regularly go back to Jingsi abode. They understand and agree with what Siji is doing, and they know what their parents are doing. We have built in the temporary school. We are now in the Philippines. The disaster release in New York. The students can resume back their study. I am truly grateful that our entire family had the same value and beliefs to be a part of Tsuji together. Welcome back. As homage to the Bamboo Bank story, that group of ladies are reviving the very spirit with which the Tsuji Foundation first began. In the past, you've worked with clients that are from charitable organizations. Now, what can you tell me about sustainable uh, charity? Sustainable charity is the idea that money or resources that are given uh, for charitable needs should be able to continue without the original donors being there. What's become a more recent trend or phenomenon idea is the concept of measurable investing. Measurable impact, how many people are being helped, to what degree by the resources that are being uh, contributed. And to count what is the impact of every dollar I'm contributing. And the sustainable part is, will those people continue to be able to take advantage of your aid once you're gone. So with that, I'd actually like to visit Jing Yi Lee, the Deputy Director of Tsuji USA's Department of Humanistic Culture, to see how she is trying to keep her work with Tsuji sustainable. Jing Yi Lee has been volunteering for Tsuji USA for more than 20 years. An actress back in Taiwan since she was 14, she was always cast in roles with strong personas. I was doing commercials at 18. This is a cashmere dress. After marriage, she came to the States with her husband to start a construction business. Still, life was fabulous. We started from scratch and made quite some money. So having gourmet food or traveling around the world for leisure was some of the basic things in our life. Mr. and Mrs. Lee raised a beautiful family and their youngest son joined their family's business. So at the end of 2007, we were at the height of the housing market in the United States. During that time, we had 10 homes that we were building here just in Hasi and the Heights, and we were expecting them to be on the market in 2008. But we actually got hit with the worst housing crash that the United States has ever seen since the Great Depression. 
It was a little bit difficult at the time. My wife and I had to sell the home we were in to move back in with my parents to help take care of the family business as well as to save as much money as we can because we didn't know how far the housing crash was going to go. We faced millions of dollars debt. Even the bank loan interest was too big to handle. I was really thankful that I have so many good friends who helped me out during the worst time of my life. When I borrowed money from good friends, many of them helped me. But the situation was not getting better. It had been two years, and I still didn't see a light of hope. I was thinking, what if I can't return the money? So when I was driving on a highway, I thought of using my life insurance to pay my friends back. At the time, I was disoriented, and I noticed I almost hit another car, which was approaching me with high speed. My car almost flipped over. I was in shock. I was chanting names of Buddha. Then I realized I had unfinished business. I need to be a good disciple of Master Chen Yan, which I would never want her to worry for me. That was what I realized after the near miss. How could I be so silly? Every morning, I was looking forward to Ziji. It was the happiest time for me. I used tremendous determination to cheer myself up in the car and to set goals for myself. Working on Ziji projects helped me forget about my own hardship. When things got harder for us, the harder she would work volunteering. You know, she, it wasn't so much that she was hoping for good energy to come. She was wanted to be surrounded by good energy. Since 2008, the beginning of a turbulent era, Jing Yi took on the campaign for Jing Si culture. From encouraging vegetarianism, delivering Jing Si aphorisms to hotels and monthly literature to jails, and caring for inmates, she hoped that the Tsiji spirit that helped her could uplift others as well. I then thought that I actually did not lose much because what I have gained is a lot more. So these last couple years of my life is actually when I'm the closest to my mom, closest to my dad. I truly believe Bolisaba will give me the best they can offer, even though things may not be as desired at the moment, but I truly believe that Bodhisattva will arrange the best for me. Through the stories that we saw today, including Jing Yili's, we saw a lot of personal struggle. So Siddharth, in your view, what are some of the major lessons that we've learned from this past financial crisis? One is healthy skepticism as individuals, and two is the courage to take small pains as a policymaker. Governments, elected officials tend to um, band-aid over small problems, but generally it is good and healthy to let small failures happen from time to time. Everybody should have a healthy amount of skepticism, but as these things start to grow, the powers that be should allow corrections rather than letting problems build up. Well, thank you so much for raving out of here in the cold with us. Thank you. And My thanks pleasure. for uh, walking us through what it means to have a healthier economy. I hope it was helpful. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining me here in New York City. I'm Bidwar Shatterson, and I'll see you soon.